gentlemen. This church house was the creation of what I may call two architects of different kinds. One was Canon Partridge, later Bishop of Portsmouth. The other architect in the proper sense of the word was Sir Herbert Baker. And this great building was completed in 1940 when it was opened by His Majesty the King. And once the church assembly sat in it. And thereafter, it ended upon a strange period of its history. Destruction fell upon it very soon, and with destruction, tragedy, in which lives were lost, and the lives of some who were of great value to both to the church house and to the nation, such as Sir Lionel Hitchin. And that is that for a period, it was the privilege of the church house to provide a home, a refuge for the houses of Parliament. And here, the House of Commons met and in a chamber at the other end of the building, the House of Lords met. Your Grace, and the Lords, and ladies and gentlemen, I should like, first of all, uh, to express our gratitude to the Archbishop and to the Corporation of the Church House uh, for putting uh, this tablet here, which commemorates a famous incident in parliamentary history, going to abandon a parliamentary government. I remember so well uh, when uh, plans were first made for providing uh, some <coughs> alternative accommodation, if the worst should come to the worst. There were quite a number of our members who were skeptical. They resented any idea of being driven out. We'll commemorate uh, to all time the determination of a democratic people. And uh, that determination conquered. Gentlemen, there is uh, little that I can add to the well-chosen words and sentiments which the Prime Minister has expressed. The, the church house was a port in a storm to the House of Commons. It was a very present help in time of trouble. We had great difficulty in carrying on uh, without interruption the uh, whole business of Parliament in the height of bombardment and war, in the teeth of very serious danger. Yet it was upon the maintenance of the uh, and continuity of parliamentary life that our whole democratic <coughs> authority rested. And if we had been driven from this center in London, if we had been unable to keep continuous sittings, very frequent, many days of the week, somehow or other, one would have felt that the cause for which we were all fighting ha had become less clearly expressed. In uh, this, we had the difficulty of persuading members of Parliament to take the necessary precautions for their safety. There was a strong feeling among members that when the factories were told to carry on, they, they, they should set an example through that war, <laughs> unflinching in times of peril and uh, unwearied by misfortune and disappointment and always at its highest when things were, were worst, this parliament was in every way worthy 
of the great rugged figures who founded the parliamentary system of Britain, as well as of all the loyal hearts that beat throughout our native land and our commonwealth beyond the seas. And here in the church house we found this refuge, which enabled us to carry on without a break. We are grateful to those who placed it at our disposal. We are grateful to those whose forethought had created this fine building. We meet here today to unveil a, a, a tablet which certainly plays a part, not only in the history of the church house, but in the history of our island home. episode in the history of this church house uh, and of the nation. I hope it will also stand as a symbol of a relation never to be ended between the church and the state in this country. That relation has grown up from the very beginning of the history of this nation and the two forces have interplayed one upon the other all through the development of our national history, social harmony. The evidence of that given to the world here in this country by a harmony. Inaugurating a new session of Parliament, we proclaim the depth and sincerity of our resolve to keep vital and active even in the midst of our struggle for life, even under the fire of the enemy, those parliamentary institutions which have served us so well, which have proved themselves the most flexible instruments for securing ordered, unceasing change and progress, which while they throw open the portals of the future, carry forward also the traditions and glories of the past, and which at this solemn moment in the world history are at once the proudest assertion of British freedom and the expression of an unconquerable national will. Yeah. Yeah.